Hello everyone, I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane, and today we're going to talk about how different industries used asbestos and the associated health risks to industrial workers. But let's start with a brief refresher on asbestos first. Asbestos refers to a group of six naturally occurring minerals that in their raw form appear as simple rocks, just like this one. This is chrysotile asbestos, which is the most common type of asbestos. When chrysotile rocks are processed, they can transform into strong, lightweight fibers like the ones you can see in this test tube. This is chrysotile fibers, and these fibers are resistant to fire, electricity, and heat, and they actually have a stronger tensile strength than steel. So asbestos was used in a multitude of industrial products like insulation materials, fireproof clothing, ceiling and floor tiles, and even fireproof papers and felts. Besides its versatility, asbestos was also inexpensive and easy to manufacture. Those factors led to its widespread use until the health risks of asbestos exposure became widely known. Now there's no safe level of asbestos exposure, and even a minimal exposure can elevate someone's risk of developing certain asbestos-related diseases. However, most health issues arise from substantial exposure to asbestos, often occurring in industrial settings. Jobs in certain industries carried a heightened risk of asbestos exposure, and consequently, a greater risk of developing asbestos-related diseases. Asbestos was not only a product sold by itself, asbestos was also an ingredient put into lots of other products. So an industry that had a great amount of potential exposure to asbestos would be the asbestos products manufacturing industry. For example, here are a few old tile samples of asbestos vinyl floor tile. We've all walked on tiles that look like this in banks and institutional settings. These floor tiles were reinforced with asbestos and the workers who made these floor tiles would have had a great amount of exposure to asbestos because the way they made products like this was to take raw asbestos, open the big 50 pound bags it came in and dump it into slurries. Every time you open a bag of asbestos powder, that's what it looked like, you're gonna be breathing it, it's very dusty. So asbestos was used as a reinforcement agent and not, thing, not only just things like uh, vinyl floor tile. Asbestos was used as a reinforcement agent in all kinds of plastics. Perhaps you've ever uh, remember working with Bakelite. Bakelite at one point was made with asbestos. Asbestos was put into cement. Asbestos was put into plastics. Lots of things you wouldn't think had asbestos in it actually did. And the first people to risk exposure to those products were the people that actually made those products. That's why people who worked in the asbestos product manufacturing industry had such potentially high exposures to asbestos. As I said before, asbestos exposure can cause a number of serious diseases. Before we talk about those diseases, let's view a medical animation illustrating how asbestos actually causes those diseases. Our law firm worked with a leading medical animation company to develop this animation, and it accurately depicts the disease process. When we breathe in foreign particles, we cough to expel them from the airway. But asbestos fibers are tiny, indestructible needles that can embed themselves in the lungs or the pleura damaging the tissue and causing hardened scars. In response, the body sends macrophages to digest and expel the asbestos fibers, but the sharp asbestos fibers pierce the macrophages, killing or warping them. This causes the macrophages to send the wrong chemical messages that cause the growth of carcinomas. Asbestos fibers also release free radicals that further damage the lung tissue and cause diseases to form. Not all of this damage is immediately visible, but over 20 to 50 years, asbestos can cause breathing problems like asbestosis, as well as mesothelioma and lung cancer. Similar processes occur when a person swallows asbestos fibers, and those fibers can cause throat cancer, stomach cancer, and colorectal cancer. Mesothelioma is the most notorious disease linked to asbestos exposure. This rare and aggressive cancer is caused almost exclusively by asbestos exposure, and it affects the mesothelium, a thin membrane surrounding our internal organs. There are only about 3,000 mesothelioma cases diagnosed annually in the US, and our firm has been successful in obtaining substantial compensation for our clients with mesothelioma. Besides mesothelioma, asbestos exposure is also linked to lung cancer. While there are other causes of lung cancer, such as smoking, individuals who smoked and were exposed to asbestos industrially face a significantly higher risk than non-smokers exposed to asbestos. Because the asbestos industry hid the risks of asbestos exposure to both smokers and non-smokers, we've been able to secure millions of dollars of compensation for people who developed lung cancer, regardless of their smoking history. As you saw in the animation, it's the inhalation of asbestos fibers that leads to mesothelioma and lung cancer. 
Inhalation of asbestos can also cause throat cancer, including both laryngeal and pharyngeal cancers. Breathing asbestos can cause cancer, but so can ingesting asbestos, which often happens accidentally when people have their mouths open around asbestos dust. Ingesting asbestos has been shown to cause stomach cancer and colon cancer as well, and we've obtained meaningful compensation for our clients with those cancers. In addition to cancer, asbestos exposure in industrial settings can also cause asbestosis, a non-cancerous but serious lung disease caused exclusively by the inhalation of asbestos dust. Asbestosis occurs when inhaled asbestos fibers permanently damage lung tissues that are needed to process oxygen. While asbestosis is rarely fatal today, it can be, and we've been privileged to represent a number of families who lost a loved one to asbestosis. As I said though, most cases of asbestosis are nowhere near fatal, but people with even mild cases of asbestosis are often entitled to compensation for their injuries. That's because the asbestos industry knew in the 1920s that their products caused asbestosis, but they concealed that information for decades. If you've been exposed to asbestos in an industrial setting and developed a related illness, we can help you in obtaining the compensation you're owed. We can obtain compensation for you from asbestos trusts, we can file an asbestos lawsuit on your behalf, and we can also assist you with collecting any disability benefits that you're entitled to. Let's talk a little more about those options. The primary focus of our law firm is obtaining compensation from the various asbestos trusts that were set up by the courts to compensate people who developed an asbestos-related disease. Right now, there are about 50 trusts that are accepting and paying claims. Obtaining settlements from the asbestos trust does not require filing a lawsuit, going to court, or being questioned by a hostile attorney. The majority of our clients receive settlements from multiple trusts, often dozens. Individuals with mesothelioma or a life-threatening cancer may see their first settlements within 60 days from retaining us, but our typical client begins receiving settlements after about six months. How much money a person receives from an asbestos trust depends in part upon how sick they are. The sicker a person is, the higher their settlements will be. Many of our clients are interested in suing the companies that expose them to asbestos, and we can of course assist with that as well. Because every state has different laws regarding asbestos lawsuits, all I can give you in this video are some broad principles that apply in all 50 states. Asbestos lawsuits take longer than asbestos trust claims do, but settlements and verdicts can often exceed the amount of trust fund settlements. Some states allow an injured person to sue his or her employer for exposing them to asbestos, while others require the injured worker to file a worker's compensation claim, which we're also experienced in doing. Finally, our office can help with asbestos disability claims. There are two types of asbestos disability claims, Social Security Disability Claims and Veterans Administration Disability Claims. Eligibility for both types of claims are based upon whether a person's asbestos-related illness leaves them medically unable to work. And of course, Veterans Administration claims are only available to veterans. If you or someone in your family has developed an asbestos-related illness, the law only gives you a certain amount of time to seek compensation for your injuries. If you wait too long, you won't be able to. So please don't wait too long to contact me or we may not be able to help. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll consider giving us the opportunity to help you and your family.